Breaking the wall of detecting free heme in cells. John Woodland, University of Cape Town. Good morning and thank you very much for the opportunity to share this stage today. It's a great privilege. Today I'd like to introduce you to one of the most important molecules in your body. It's called heme and it looks like this. Now normally heme is very tightly bound to proteins and it's in this form that's biologically active. So uh, think of your red blood cells for example. They contain large amounts of a molecule called hemoglobin. Hemoglobin gets its name from heme which transports the gases around your body and globin is the protein to which the heme is bound. But sometimes things go wrong and the heme can become unbound or liberated from the protein and it's this free heme that then becomes an extremely damaging and toxic molecule and it's been implicated in a whole bunch of disorders including various forms of cancer and degenerative diseases. But the most striking form of free heme toxicity occurs in malaria. And you don't need me to remind you just what a devastating disease malaria is particularly in sub-Saharan Africa where I'm from. And of the three minutes I'll be talking to you now, no fewer than nine people will have died from the disease. The thing is, when the malaria parasite invades your red blood cells, it takes up the hemoglobin, breaks it down into nutrients in order to survive and grow, and this releases the free heme, which would normally be toxic to the parasite, but it's evolved an ingenious mechanism by which it's able to convert all this toxic heme into a harmless crystal form called hemozoan that looks something like this. Now, this unique pathway is the ideal target for an anti-malarial drug, and indeed, this is the way most of our current drugs work, because if we're able to inhibit the conversion of toxic heme to hemozone, it causes a toxic accumulation of heme, which kills the parasite. But as you know, drug resistance is a huge problem, and so scientists are engaged in an arms race with the malaria parasite to constantly come up with more effective, uh, more efficient anti-malarial agents uh, in order to, to defeat the scourge. And you can imagine that if we better understood the biology of the malaria parasite, how much free heme there is, where it is, then this would be really useful in developing the next generations of anti-malarial drugs. So what we've done in my research is to develop a fluorescent sensor or a probe that's able to bind very strongly and specifically to the heme in order to show us where it is in the parasite. And so here, for the first time, you're seeing images of the malaria parasite treated with a common anti-malarial drug incubated with this probe that seems to suggest where all this free heme accumulates. And we suspect that it's probably the endoplasmic reticulum of the cell. But this is really exciting because we can now use all this information to probe the mechanism of action of our current anti-malarial drugs in order to finally inform the rational design of future anti-malarial agents. So this is all very exciting. And because we have good reason to believe that this works in malaria parasites, we can now turn our attention to all the other diseases I mentioned earlier in which free heme suspects to play a role, but which we haven't been able to investigate because we haven't had a way of being able to see the free heme in cells. So we are breaking the wall of detecting free heme in cells. Thank you very much.